everyone! Welcome once again to Shield Discussions. I'm Captain Logan. And I am Dan. Today, Dan and I are playing catch up, and we're reviewing the episode from last week uh, because it was Thanksgiving, and Dan and I didn't get a chance to get together and do a podcast. So now we're uh, coming up doing repairs. Uh, and that's the name of the episode, not us fixing the show. It's just the name of it. <laughs> repairs. And uh, there wasn't an, uh, an episode this week, so um, we're, we're luckily we just have to talk about this one because I, I think we thought we were going to have to do two. Yeah, that's what I thought up until like this evening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I was kind of relieved that there was only one to do. Not that I wouldn't have watched more of the show and wouldn't have enjoyed it. I just, uh, you know, more to watch, more to take notes on. So finally, a uh, Melinda May-centered sort of episode. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that, but we get a little bit of her backstory, um, or at least we get a lot of talking about it, uh, <laughs> of, of, of the fact that it happened, and um, her kind of wrestling with demons. Uh, and I, I do I do like how that is, um, um, how, how that's uh, kind of dealt with in relation to the... Uh, guest stars this episode. I think they do a pretty good job of paralleling those two yeah, things. I think that's yeah, so kind of neat. Um, but uh, yeah, pretty much the big thing for the uh, for for the ongoing narrative of this of the series is just finally we're sort of talking about that. Let's go ahead and get into the general overview. Uh, the first thing I wanted to mention is I thought this premise from the outset was a little bit X File ish. I don't. Um, I actually haven't seen an episode of X Files before. Um, oh man! But. If I had seen one, I'm sure I would agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't mean wholly, especially once we once we find out that it's an alternate dimension thing. Although X Files went everywhere sci-fi, so they, they, they could have gone there. Right. Um, in fact, maybe they did at some point. I just don't I don't remember. There's so many episodes of that show, but um, it's it's shot in, in kind of a horror way oh, uh, oh. with with um, the guy popping out from the alternate dimension and uh, and, and, and jumping in, and the way that the strobe black thing works toward the end and all of that. Um, I thought the directing in this one was really, really strong. Yeah, I, I think it was very um, interesting in the way that they used that guy's powers and, and uh, the way they shot him from behind people and things like that. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, specifically that, I really liked. And also just little nuances that I, I noticed. I mean, like, we had a Jonathan Frakes directed episode last week, um, who, uh, or, or a, a couple weeks ago, um, who, who I've always thought is a really good TV director. Um, I thought this guy was as good or better than Frakes. Uh, he, he was doing a lot of really, um, of, of really imaginative things with, with uh, again, subtle, um, with, with, the, with the camera, uh, like at the end, um, the way he moves up from the, from the uh, Scrabble board. Oh, yeah, very things. good. Like, 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 he's thinking, you know, the, where, where, where he's putting the camera, I thought was really interesting in some places. There's there, there's there's that spot where we're with uh, the guest star chick uh, Hannah and um, the the camera is like sideways mm -hmm. on her and then when she gets up it moves with her kind of kind of like from her perspective but it's still third person yeah. and like and like it moves with her as she got gets up I thought that was cool camera work in this very movie. yeah very true yeah I agree um, but anyway uh, let's get into the story uh, what did what what did you think of this one overall um, uh. I thought it was kind of interesting. I mean, I wish we... Like, this was supposed to be, I think, maybe possibly the revelationist of what happened in Melinda May's past. Uh, but it's just sort of a lot of people talking about it. I wish we got to see her sort of talk about it. I mean, I guess maybe the point of her character is she's the one we never get into the head of, I, I suppose. But, like, I want to get to know her a little bit more than I do and get in her head because she seems interesting. Like, the actress plays the material she's given in an interesting way. I've always thought that there's, you know, more going on than she lets on. And that's sort of, you know, her character, I guess. But, um, I don't know. I, I kind of wish we got her talking about the personal demons and, um... This episode's all kind of about, like, the choices we make and whether we can never really atone and repent them or we have to sort of take them as life lessons and move on and, like, how much we should del dwell on the choices we make in, in our past life. And I, I wish we had Melinda May sort of discussing those things because people, like, bring stuff like that up to her, like, specifically Sky when she's talking about how she justifies things and Melinda May sort of... Um, 
downing people that believe in religious things like that's what they need to believe to to live their lives and, and things like that i wish there was a little bit more discussion from her and her perspective on those sorts of things because she doesn't really say much what, what do you think here's the thing i think you get her perspective on it i just don't think that you get uh, I, I i i think that what you're dan that what you're you're missing is the history you know what i mean i think you're i i i think i think you're you're uh because I was doing, because I'm doing this too. I think you're looking at her and going, "Okay, I get it, but I wish I knew more about you personally." Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? Like, because when we get to the end, um, you you uh, you have her um, give that guy um, that that uh, the, the, the Tobias character that 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 final advice of you know you can't fix this, you have to move on, and um, you you have you have to let her go, and then um, she says to uh, to um, Colson, uh, you know, you know what I what I said to him was what you told me after the after after the whole cavalry incident. So like I I think that this isn't um, so much about her learning anything as it is about us getting um, getting like what her personal philosophy has turned into and how she has places to go. She needs to find a way to move on herself, and she's she's never really quite done that, but she can tell other people to. Um, you know what I mean? Where it's right. like she gets it, but she's so detached. So, I mean, like, I, I, I think I think that it's it's telling us something about her, it's just not enough. But the problem also is um, if she's going to refuse to tell anybody what exactly happened during that mission, how would we get it right now? And that's the difficulty. So this I will be fine with if when we finally get it, it's a really interesting revelation. I think what what I, what what I really resist about this is that it's episode nine. Yeah. I think that if we had gotten this episode at three or four, I'd feel a lot better about it. I because um, it treats it like we're getting some kind of big revelation about her, but sort of like with the ward thing, it just doesn't go far enough. This late in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if this had been the episode where we get her personally lamenting about the experience and. Every and we learn every nuance of as to why she is like this now. It probably would have been more okay with it, even if we hadn't gotten it earlier. If you know what I mean, like I'm, right. I'm with you. I think it's stringing us along a little bit. It is, and and I had that exact note. But but also the the, the problem is, could they um, draw the connection with Coulson? if we got all that right away. The problem is we're not reading a novel. The problem is we're watching a TV show, and for her to lament about those things, she has to tell a person. Right. And she's not in a place where she's willing to do that. She's, she's developing this family with these, and we've talked about how she's kind of like the mother hen, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, in, 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 at times. And so she's developing this kind of family unit with these people on this airplane, and they're the people that are eventually going to have to get her out of her shell, but she's not there yet. And that was kind of the, that was kind of partly the point of the episode that, like, um, we've got to get her to a point where she doesn't have to tragically sacrifice herself like this guy did or something, right. because she's so far gone. She's, she's like, she's so cold and detached. Um, that's what her character is right now. So I see what they're doing. They would lose, they would develop the character to, to more quickly than they want to if they were to have told us all of that right now, but they're drawing so much attention to it that it feels like we're being strung along. Yeah, and I think maybe the idea is to, like, <clears throat> you're, she's supposed to be the example of, like, what the, like the life of being a spy will eventually do to everybody. Yeah, good point. I think that's... Maybe the role she's playing in this episode too, um, but it's just not. We're we're not given enough from her personally for it to mean as much as it, as it would. I mean, like when I when I go into a, a spy story, like I don't I don't mean this co to compare this directly to things, but like you go and see a movie like um, Casino Royale or Skyfall, and you like get into James Bond's head, and you realize like what being a spy does to you personally like psychologically what that does to a person and you can relate to him because you like understand where he's coming from like he has to do some terrible things and we know yeah. Melinda May has done those things we're told about it a lot but we're never really shown or she doesn't really give the emotional sort of resonance I suppose that it's needed for me to be completely effective I don't know 
Yeah, this show is all about um, the secrets that these people are keeping from each other, and so they have to, by extension, uh, keep secrets away from the audience, which becomes problematic in the kind of storytelling they're doing. Uh, because they'll do these character episodes, but then we don't get to get in the characters' heads, because if we got too far in their heads, then other people would have to know about it. Um, but not necessarily. They could do it differently. They could tell us things they're not telling other people, but they'd have to do it through flashbacks. I somewhat appreciate the fact that they're sort of avoiding flashbacks for the most part, and yet uh, I don't feel like I know enough about these people to care sometimes, sometimes, right? <laughs> the thing that I really did kind of latch onto, though, is um, the idea that Coulson and May are both um, have both been totally changed by their experiences um, with with Shield, where they were um, one person and they've now turned into something that is profoundly different. And the difference is Coulson likes what he's become and she doesn't. Yeah, exactly. And I do really like that. Uh, and and, and the, the kind of sad thing of eventually Coulson's going to find out what actually happened to him and he's going to have to figure out if he can remain the, the idealistic, somewhat naive, or not naive, but um, idealistic. Like, like I said, character right. that he that that, that that he wants to be, um, and uh, you know, if he knew about his sorted stuff about his sorted past that he doesn't know, maybe he wouldn't be able to do that. Um, and might he turn into something more like Melinda May? I think that's kind of what's going on there, and I like that. I think that's really interesting and working pretty well. Something I mean, I want to mention too. Um, before I forget, Dan, sure. is uh, because somebody left a comment um, on. I'm trying to remember. Was it the last episode? Because it's been a couple weeks. Was it the last one where you where you get to the end and you have that um, and you have that dream sequence with Coulson in Tahiti? Yeah, I think that was. Yeah. The one. Okay. Um, somebody mentioned, and I can't believe I missed it, but it's been a couple of years since I've seen Dollhouse. Um, somebody mentioned Dollhouse. And uh, that that last scene means a lot more than I realized it did. Oh, really? uh, that, that we, yeah, we are dealing with this identity thing. We are dealing with, is Coulson an empty shell and he's been programmed by S.H.I.E.L.D. completely? Because that's what Dollhouse was. And when he wakes up, they, they did a callback to the big line that's always repeated in Dollhouse. I think it's really interesting that they're doing a big story point, they're revealing something, or, or at least potentially revealing something, by calling back to another Whedon show. I have reservations about that, because anybody that didn't see that show would not know what the heck they were doing. Yeah, I have um, no idea. When he, when, when he wakes up, because the whole premise of Dollhouse was uh, you have this this covert underground thing um, that, well, they're, 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 they're like, they're their own private kind of illegal organization. They're not run by the government. And they, um, and, and they, uh, they like, like solve um, problems for people that people pay them for by, um, by creating like spies by like like uh, taking a blank shell person that they have erased their mind and they keep like like uh, giving them a new persona every time, oh, yeah. and um and it's really it's it's a really interesting concept. And um when I when a doll wakes up, that's what they call them. When a doll wakes up, um their handler will say um or, or the, I'm sorry when they wake up they will say was I sleeping? And the handler says um um uh, just for a little while, and that's the exchange in that dream sequence. Oh, that's true. So basically, we're saying Coulson is a doll, like from Dollhouse. Or uh, life model decoy. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. So, yeah, yeah. So that's cool. And, and I mean, like, I said I kind of have reservations about it. I, I don't think it's a huge revelation, because I think it's kind of, you know, telling us things that some of us were already kind of picking up on. Yeah. Um, so, but it's kind of an interesting way to do it, right? To, like, call back to another show that's completely unrelated to this, except the, the, the same people made it, or at least some of the same people made it. Um, anyway, I wanted to mention that uh, because, uh, and I, I, I should have written down the person who, who mentioned that, but anyway, um, I'll try to find it and put it in the, in the description, but um, kudos to you for noticing that, and I wish I caught it. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, while we're on the subject of things from last episodes, too, I mean, this is sort of related to this one where it, because it begins with Ward and May waking up in bed together to a degree. Um, I just wanted to mention that a lot of people had commented on the, the discussion we did for that episode where it ended with them going into the room together with a bottle of alcohol, and... Uh, we didn't necessarily assume that they were going to sleep together, but I guess that was the case. Um, I just, 
the the, re the only reason I didn't really think that was going to happen, I just assumed, like, he's a younger guy, and, like, I know that actress, even though she looks great for her age, she's 50 years old, so I didn't see them as, like, a, a not romantic couple, but people that would sleep together, I guess, because there's nothing romantic about their relationship in here at all. Um, I think they just had this, like, personal connection because of what they've been with, through with the, with the rage right. staff, with with the Berserker staff, and uh, I guess I'm kind of naive. I suppose if you have two people on television that are of the opposite gender and they walk into a room together with a bottle of alcohol, that's probably what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, so good I, I would have thought that, but, like, I don't know. I kind of wanted to think maybe they're not going to do the stereotypical thing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and yet, it's not quite as stereotypical as I expected. Right. Uh, now that now that we're seeing where it's going, you know, what I really expected, Dan, when, when, we, when we got the scene of, of, of them, um, you know, you know, you know where, where they have been something. I, I really thought we were going to get the stereotypical. Okay, he's going to want to talk about it, and she's going to want to pretend like it never happened. I really like they didn't go there. Yeah, because neither of them really talk about it at all, which is, I think, kind of typical of the spy sort of lifestyle. Like they're they're used to just sort of doing that in the field, either to manipulate people or you know, because they need it pleasurably, like they're not able to settle down with people. Um, so that makes sense for those two kind of spy characters to behave that way. And um, it'll be interesting to see what they do with Sky and Ward, because I think they have a fledgling kind of romantic thing going on, and whether or not Ward will be able to settle down with one person, or um, how oh, the let's say being in the equation complicates things, you know. The person who mentioned the uh, dollhouse thing was um, was uh, Tari um, Aguruz. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, but I wanted to give him credit for that. Um, so, uh, and, and I think I think um, a number of people, um, including Satnas, mentioned the whole um, they probably did more than drink together thing. Um, another reason that I think that that, uh, that that those folks were right, and maybe we should have noted, we we should have thought of it though, is that they they like both of them were going to need a place for that energy to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very true. Um, and I think it's really, really good uh, that they're um, remembering that and that they're not just going to conveniently forget the Berserker staff thing. I have a feeling this is going to be behavior that goes on for a while. I have a feeling, too. And, and that that's the way they're able to kind of curb it and kind of kind of kind of hide it and not be all rage induced all the time. Did you get the feeling that um, that uh, Ward was a little bit um, kind of on edge, even still after his experience from last episode. Yeah, I did get that that um, that feeling from him. He was just a little bit more uh, reactive than usual because usually he's just so calm and collected all the time. Uh, there were some points in here where I felt like he was a little bit jumpy, especially in the dark, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and kind kind of interesting. Right after that episode, that one of the first things we see him doing is like is like a, is like a cutting fruit with a knife. Yeah, very good point. Uh, okay. What what else? Getting away from uh, how last episode goes into this episode, <laughs> let's talk about this actor. Um, were you uh, at all irritated by all of the prank stuff? Not particularly. I thought um... that was. But I, I kind of expected I would be, and then it wasn't. I, I guess it pays off at the end, which I which I thought was nice. I'm not sure if if if, it, if we needed all of that to have that payoff, but it, but it's it's nice to it's nice to get to the end and have that kind of nice uh, a high note of um, maybe there's maybe all of this is humanizing me a little bit and having these people, you know, um, in her life is humanizing her a little bit. Yeah, I liked that she was able to like you know come out of her shell like you said a little bit and like fitz simmons doing the pranks i like the initial one where they had that dialogue exchange with sky i thought was actually pretty amusing and i thought it was funny yeah it was a whole i love that when they say it was a horse the first thing i thought was this has to be a joke but what if it wasn't yeah and like you have to assume like if you know those people they're not the first people you're going to expect to be like joking because they're kind of like timid reserved kind of people well and you know what else i didn't think yeah um, they they wouldn't know. How would they know? Well, they said that there's like stories going around about it at the academy. No, I know, but that's my point. Is right. that they think about it. They don't have the right clearance. Like if there's if there are stories going around at the academy, you have to assume that they're all wrong. Right. I mean, and Sky doesn't really know how the academy works either. So that she's never been there. She doesn't really know how the um, like if they would know or not. Like if maybe Coulson had told them. I just mean for the audience. We right. really should be right. assuming yeah. at the very beginning they don't know anything. That's my point. Um, and also, I just thought of this. Isn't it kind of somewhat of an interesting parallel that, um, or, or connection at least, that uh, 
uh, Coulson keeps exaggerating how long he was under when he died, and everybody keeps exaggerating what the situation was with her. That's like, they, like they, they're 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 drawing a lot of a lot of parallels between those two situations. That's a very good point. I didn't even think about that, but I think you're how def- how de- how character defining those are. Um, one of the things that I noticed, and uh, I think is interesting about Sky's character in this. She didn't get a ton to do in this, but um, they make a really big deal in this about how she, good she is at reading people socially. And um, I think it's very interesting, considering that we think she's going to be spider Woman, that a girl that uh, lives in a van has really good social skills and pheromones are related to social interaction. Just That's saying. <laughs> That's a great point. Uh, she should be she should be isolated and bad at conversation. Yeah, exactly. And she's not like that at all. Um, I, I don't know. Every time there's an episode of this, I like feel like she's becoming Spider Woman. Like there's a clue more and more. But I don't know if I'm just reading into it too much or not. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna randomly read a few of my notes here. Uh, we yeah we go to um, we go to Batesville, but I wish it was Batesville, Arkansas, because I've been there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It would have been really cool if it was that. If that was the Batesville, um, I want uh, I want Fitz's um, uh, black and red striped shirt. I'd like to, I'd like to have that shirt. I thought that was very snazzy looking, and I, I'd like and that he did, shirt. He did look good in it. I have to. Say. He looked good in it. Yeah, he was rocking that. He was rocking that shirt. It was a, it was a goofy ensemble. But he was totally <laughs> oh, rocking. of course. <laughs> you can't have that guy look stylish, you know. No, but it, it worked for him. Yeah, exactly. I thought it was great. Uh, oh, you know what I was talking about directing earlier? I guess that was my favorite thing about this. Um, that shot with Hannah and Skye on the opposite walls with the wall between them, that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, I think uh, a lot of the point of that, um, of the prank stuff was to subvert expectations, uh, both the audiences and, and character expectations, um, because uh, it's, it's playing like it's going to be this lighter episode, and I guess in some ways it sort of is. Um, in, in fact, it kind of... It, it kind of acts like the stuff with uh, Tobias is scarier than it is. Did you kind of did you kind of feel that way? Like it was playing that up, like it was really scary, and I was like, "This is not that scary." And isn't it an interesting that the way of like everybody on the plane to like have fun is playful deception, and that's kind of what the story's been all about so far. I think that's a sort of an interesting thing too. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I thought it was I thought it was interesting uh, tonally how um, the 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 episode keeps trying to keep the audience unnerved while um, the characters have no idea what's going on and they're just like trying to play pranks on each other. So you've got this like, really ominous music while um, while uh, Fitz does, does that does that joke with the helmet and you're like, why are we acting like this is something going on? Like, like <laughs> you know, this is like, this is trouble with Tribbles level. Right? I, don't, I don't understand. And then, and then suddenly, and then suddenly that guy, that guy shows up and you're like, and you're like, oh, I guess that's why. But still, it, it never. It was never that scary. Right. I don't know. Like, I think, I think it's kind of funny. Um, more often, the stuff that, that that played like it was ominous was just sort of cool looking. Yeah. Um, like uh, like like I said, the strobe stuff I thought was 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 okay. I thought that was kind of cool looking. Yeah, I I have no problems really with the way, like you said, the the visuals or anything with the episode. Um, the directing was great and. Uh, the way that that guy's powers looked, like when he was teleporting and, and stuff, I think will look really cool. Um, how he was like phasing in and out of between dimensions and sometimes and stuff, I thought it looked cool. Is it ironic that this episode actually has more to do with Dark World than the one that was supposed to be about Dark World? <laughs> well, what do you mean? Well, I mean that they, they, they draw a direct connection between all of the jump dimension jumping that happens in that movie. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, and what's going on here. There. Because they because they mention that they, they mention that and they mention that um that, that there are these scientists trying to create uh, uh, a, a window to a dimension after what happened with that they're like they're like that's why they're doing it I guess um, so I mean maybe some people were trying that as early as as Avengers but um, but now we've seen all of this dimension hopping yeah this is directly related to that movie much much more so than the last episode was yeah that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that's funny. Like, they, what I'm saying is, they could have done this one, and I think people would have more thought, "Oh, this is more about that movie," even though that was that was kind of Asgardian. Especially if they use the Asgardian realm of hell as the thing that he got, like, you know, sent to. Yeah. 
dude, that would have been fantastic. Yeah, I think it's kind of fun that we didn't see it, that he just kept saying that it was hell. Um, yeah, and you never got the sense of it really was or not. I, I liked that it sort of walked the line neutrally with, with all the religion stuff. It wasn't, like, preachy either way, you know? Because you get his perspective on it, but, like, you still get the, the... You never get anyone, like, you know, definitively coming down and saying, you know, religion is not true or bad, or religion is, you know, something you should have and aspire to. No, we are in no way whatsoever begrudging, I think, or belittling... Bel bel belittling. Uh, Hannah's religion by, uh, by by her um, finding out that it's not actually God punishing her because right. what, what she's really doing is punishing her for herself for something she didn't do. So right. whether there whether there is a God or not is not what's at issue here. It's that she she, she is unnecessarily um, uh, you know hurting herself basically. Yeah, exactly. And um, I have some uh, reservations about like what happened in that whole situation which I'll talk about in my worst moment because that's actually my oh, worst great. thing but well why don't we just go ahead and jump into it then oh. uh, let's go to best moment worst moment shall we because I'm sure more things will come up right. uh, what, what was your favorite moment then my favorite moment um, I think was actually even though it was just sort of talked about I really liked the dialogue exchange between Sky and Coulson about Melinda May because I thought it was very well acted and I thought that like the little we got character stuff with her engaged me the most in the episode. Like, that was what I was sort of latching onto when I was watching the episode initially. Um, I don't know. There was other stuff in the episode that I sort of liked action-wise. Like, the, I, I liked um, the fight between Melinda May and, uh, uh, what's his name, Tobias, the teleporting guy. I thought that was a very cool-looking fight. I was like, oh, you know, we got Nightcrawler going on sort of here, teleporting all over the place. It looked really cool. Yeah, in the, in the middle of, like the barn set from a small village. That's a good one. I wasn't even thinking about that. But yeah, it, it did look like that. Uh, that's exactly the scene I wrote down too, Dan. Yeah. And uh, I thought that uh, it, it gave, it actually told us, a, it revealed a little more about Coulson, really. Yeah. Because uh, we didn't know that Coulson was directly involved. We didn't know he was there. And, um, and uh, you know, you know we, I mean, we knew that that incident had to have had something to do with why he wanted her on the plane. Mm-hmm. But um, I do think it's cool that uh, they have that connection um, because they have a deeper connection even than that with everything I was talking about earlier. So it's neat that that's kind of a turning point for her. And then he has one similar later, but he was there for hers. Yeah. It's kind of unfortunate that she couldn't have somehow been there for his. But maybe she was because we're not just talking about his death. We're also talking about his resurrection. That's yeah? True, yeah. So maybe she knows. In fact, have we had anything yet where we know definitively that May knows what happened to him? I th there's that one scene where she opens his shirt and we see the scars and she sort of talks to him about it. But we don't. I don't think know definitively if she knows whether or not. I would bet money, and I should say this for predictions, but I didn't write anything down for predictions this time, so I'll mention it now. Um, I would kind of bet you money, I think, that we're going to discover that she had a hand in that. I wouldn't doubt it, especially because that that would really that would really close the knot on all of that on on, on all of those connections, right? Like right, yeah. like uh, like they have they have such a deep relationship going on that I don't think they're even fully aware of. Um, that if they didn't do that, missed opportunity. Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, I think it would be interesting to learn the full depth of their relationship and like why she would personally be invested in wanting him to come back even if it's a death i mean a a life that's not as fulfilling as you know uh regular life would be because like you said if he ends up being a life model decoy he's just an empty shell like maybe that's why she sort of is concealing it and showing him the scar on his on his stomach because she doesn't want him to know because if he finds out then it would be also you know it would have everything that also, it would have a lot to do with why she didn't want to go back for field work. That's true. Yeah. She would not want to be on that plane with him because if she knows something, she wouldn't want to be compromised in a situation, which inevitably will happen if I'm right, where he finds out that she knows. That's a good point. And you want these characters to be hiding things. If this is about secrets, you want these characters to be hiding things from each other about each other and not just individually kind of arbitrary things that are just personal that once a person finds out about it, it'll be like, oh, and now I know that about you. Um, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, it needs to affect their interpersonal relationships. Oh, yeah, somehow. definitely, definitely. What was your worst moment? I didn't really have one. My worst moment was sort of why everyone in the town is so angry at this lady for an explosion that happens 
on her watch. Like, she wasn't directly involved in, like, sabotaging the machine and having it explode. Like, she was just the floor manager. Like, it was just an accident. <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it because... Didn't they not start freaking out until all the other, um, like, uh, like like seemingly telekinetic things happen well, no, like, like I thought it was in the convenience store at the beginning of the movie of the uh, episode and the guy's like you killed this guy how dare you and like there's a newspaper that's like this lady killed four people <laughs> like what <laughs> well I yeah I don't know I thought there were other incidents around her before well, maybe, that maybe I missed something but I was like that's a little strange <laughs> I can't think I can't think of anything maybe you're maybe you're right yeah. what are in the comments if I missed something but if I didn't that that's sort of weird just because she uh, survived it means she must have caused yeah exactly it. I was like that's kind of strange <laughs> but anyway I uh, you know this isn't um, a huge deal, but I did think that because we already had the um, telepathy is, is 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 considered impossible in this universe, I immediately knew she wasn't telekinetic. That's true. Like, because <laughs> they kind of did the same thing again, and, and it wouldn't have been as glaring if it had been s several more episodes later. But it's only been a few episodes. It's only been like four or five episodes, or or, or less. I forget. So, like, like to, to 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 once again go, oh, a telekinesis is impossible, and then her go. I definitely had nothing to do with this. I'm like, there's another person that's following her around, yeah. of course. I mean, I'm glad it wasn't exactly the same situation where there was, like, somebody forcing her to do things. It's different. But, um, it, like, like uh, they, they are playing it. Like, they're going to blow my mind when I find out that there's really this other person in, in, in involved. And I'm like, no, my mind isn't. I mean, you're, you know, I'm not, you're, you're not really impressing me. You've done this episode already. Uh, and at least you've done that uh, that part of it. Yeah, exactly. I, well, I was um, pretty confident that she was in no way involved with anything. Uh, yeah, in here me too. Beginning. I, I agree with you. <laughs> uh, the religious stuff made it better, I think. Yeah, I think but, so too. Well, uh, I think we've already kind of nailed down what's the big idea on this one. Pretty cut and dry, Dan. Yeah, sort of, you know, the choices we make, can we ever repent or truly, uh, you know, make up for our mistakes? Or should we just roll with the punches and move on and... And develop his people because like the whole thing with the antagonist of the episode is he's not able to he makes a big mistake and he sort of dwells on it and that's his problem uh, yeah not just dwells on it but thinks that he has to fix it right exactly exactly and something that's happened already forward can't fix yeah um there's also uh trying to explain the unexplainable mm -hmm. yeah that's true there's a lot of that going on um guest stars this is really interesting we have two guest stars in this episode that have hardly or never been in anything. Um, uh, Hannah is played by Laura Say, who's been in a bunch of random short films. She was somebody in Superbad, which I never saw, huh. and but prob probably something really minor, I would yeah. expect. And she was in that really short-lived, awful comedy called Cavemen. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That's what she's done. Tobias Ford was played by Robert Baker. This is his first IMDb, IMDb credit ever. Really? Yeah, he he's never done anything but this. Both of them were serviceable. I didn't have a Service. problem with... I thought she was um, maybe a better actor than he was. Oh, yeah, I would if, say so. If we're going to compare them, I thought she was okay. Um, I, I'm kind of, I guess, seeing her performance here, I'm, I'm a little surprised she hasn't gotten more work. Um, but I do like that the show is, um, you know, given... given folks a chance it seems like this is kind of a proving ground for some people oh yeah definitely i mean if you're going from bit parts in super bad to you know a marvel television show even if it's just a one-off episode that's a pretty big jump up the exposure wise you know yeah it might help you get to get some more character bits um what i i think what probably disappoints some people is that we haven't gotten a lot of like big name guest stars yet we haven't we haven't, we haven't gotten or like great character actors that like we recognize from a whole lot of things um because you know we got the one in the first episode and uh with with um with uh the guy who played gun on uh on um um angel and, and and you got the sense that oh we're probably going to get a lot of really great you know whedon alum and not much of that's happened yet um, and then you, and, and I know I compare these things all the time. It's just these are the two big shows I'm watching, and they're both comic book shows. You go over to Arrow, and we get people we recognize all the time, and it's really fun. And you're just like, oh yeah, I know that guy from that thing. Yeah. And so um, it feels kind of funky because this is a this is a show on a bigger network with I would assume a bigger budget. And I'm looking at Arrow, and I'm going character actor, character actor, and I'm going I'm watching this, and I'm going hopefully someday. <laughs> 
it's this person and another thing from right. this. Yeah. Um, so I'm not complaining. I, you know, good actors are good actors, but um, I, what I'm saying is, I imagine that that is disappointing to a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, I just would really like for Colby Smulders to be a regular on this show as Maria Hill. That's what I want to. Yeah, and I want to see Ron Glass come back. It's going to be incredibly glaring, and I don't think this will happen. I mean, we're only nine episodes in. It will be really weird if Ron Glass gets that big line where he's like, he can never know. And then we never see him again. <laughs> I know, right? Could we not do that, maybe? <laughs> you set him up like he was going to be a big character in the show, you know, and then, like, he doesn't come back yet. Please don't do that. I love Ron Glass. Yeah, I'd like to see a lot of the characters that they established previously come back. Like, I'd love to see Victoria Brand again. The episode in the in the headquarters that she was in. But I think we will. I think both of them, uh, her and um, the, 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 uh, no, the, the, the that that uh, that African American guy. Oh yeah, he was Iron Man's shield handle. I can't. Remember. Yes, because uh, um, he has that he has that uh, amusing scene with um, with a uh, Simmons. Um, I'm, I think both of them will see again. I hope so. I hope so. I think that was with Sim. I think that was who that was, or was he in some other scene? No, he's in. It, it was the one that Simmons tases, right? Yeah, that's what I yeah, thought. Yeah, that's what. Okay, okay, okay. yeah, that, yeah. He was funny. Yeah. Um. Oh, okay. Uh, let's go to favorite line then. And uh, Dan, did you have one? I uh, my favorite line was uh, when Sky shot back at Melinda May, saying, "Is that how you justify your uh, shoot first policy?" I thought that was a nice retort and uh, sort of gave Melinda May her comeuppance. Like you could tell, she didn't really have a response to that, um, given you know how where she was in her life at that point. So I, I don't know. I just thought that was a good retort from Sky. But other than that, there wasn't any real like you know big mind-blowing line here <laughs> yeah this was a super cool worthy although um mine was also surprisingly um a different skyline oh, and uh, skyline <laughs> and uh, it was <laughs> and um i thought she had a a clever uh, uh uh metaphor when she said uh you can catch a lot more flies with honey than napalm i like that line too i have to say that was good. That was, that was good. Um, I also liked uh, how how uh, May's coldness is sometimes playing for dark comedy. When she was like, "I don't mean to scare you, but I need to use you as a as bait." Yeah. <laughs> like that that that, that really uh, encapsulates how incapable of like uh, of, of socializing she is. Like <laughs> she has no idea how to treat people. I loved Hannah's kind of reaction to that too, because she was like. She was just, like, half crying, but she's, like, being sarcastic at the same time. She's like, that's that's comforting. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that, that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's a Whedon um, way to write that, yeah. too. Uh, let's go to comic references. Uh, I had just one or two. Did you have any? The one I had was the Roxxon gas station that blows up. It's a big corporate evil entity in Marvel. But other than that, I didn't really notice anything else. Did you notice another one? No, that was the only singular one I saw. There's another one that uh, is mentioned here that has been mentioned before, but we've never mentioned another show, oh, I don't okay. think, so I thought I'd bring it up, which is, the, or maybe you did, I forget, but just in case, to cover our bases, sure. um, the fact that the plane is 616. Oh, yes, yes, I think we have. I didn't know if we never yeah. talked about that. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Well, uh, do you have any predictions based on this one? I feel like this one's not setting much up, so... Just the ongoing sky thing, based on the evidence that I mentioned before, but other than that, there were no major predictions from me, I don't think. Okay, let's go on a trivia then. Uh, what was your uh, question from a couple weeks ago, and what was the answer, Dan? The question from a couple weeks ago was, what was the sister organization of S.H.I.E.L.D. that protects uh, the Earth from otherworldly threats from space? And uh, uh, the, no. answer is, the answer is S.W.O.R.D., which is also an organization co-created by Joss Whedon in his Astonishing X-Men run, so I thought it was a very apt question for the S.H.I.E.L.D. discussions trivia. Yeah, I didn't know he. I didn't know he did that. That's cool. Yes, yes, he did. Okay, well, my question from last time was, where does Coulson suggest Randolph settle down at the end of that episode? And it was Portland, Oregon, uh, which, if I'm not mistaken, was the place where he met the cellist. Um, I didn't go back and relook this up. I think I'm right about that. Uh, maybe I'm not, but the fact that he mentioned the Philharmonic there, I thought was really interesting um, because he. Uh, is obviously a classical music buff, mm. um, or into you know music. Uh, so so I so I thought um, 
that that was that was interesting, especially if that's actually where they were. I just don't remember the line from Iron Man. Right. I think I think maybe that that was where it was. Um, that's a cool callback if it is. Anyway, it's, it's um, attention to detail. Dan, what is your question for this time? My question for this week is Hydra, the main uh, organizational enemy of Shield. When were they founded as an organization in six one six Marvel continuity? You mean like what year or? Like what time period? Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Cool. It's a very long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, my question for this time, of course, uh, as always with mine uh, from the episode, what word does Simmons spell, which the others question if it's a real word at the end when they're playing Scrabble? What's the word? Uh, well, everybody, thanks as always for listening to Shield Discussions, and uh, we'll be with you again. Do we have an episode next week, Dan? We do. It's the one that should have aired when I thought there was a second one on. <laughs> okay, cool, because I didn't look that up. So uh, we'll be with you again next Friday then. And um, also, if you uh, watch our live comic show, uh, we'll be with you on Thursday night at 7 p.m. Thanks, at, uh, Central Time, my time, 8 p.m. Dan's time. Yes, it's the app later. Well, anyway, uh, thanks again for listening, and hope you enjoyed it. I'm Captain Logan. I'm Dan. See you later. Thank you.